Hi everybody, Quentin here. I'm in our 10x10 10 10 greenhouse. It's March 12th. And five days ago we had a um, freeze, about 25, 27 degrees. That was outside. And um, inside here the temperature got down as low as um, I think, uh, yeah, 40 degrees. There's a little number there. Just given the lowest temperature and the highest temperature, 102 degrees. And that's, that's been running all winter. So here in Alabama, I know we had some really cold snaps and um, these plants have been exposed to as cold as 40 degrees so you can see they're pretty happy and of course what really affects them is, is the water temperature so because this is all hydroponics the water temperature would have got down to 40 degrees and um, the way it's all structured this is a heat sink it's this greenhouse so it just sucks in the um, sunlight and um, temperature and these, this water here heats up to a good uh, 70 degrees during the day. In the summertime it gets as high as 85, so that's why we can really power some, um, some vegetables up here. If you notice down here we got our microgreens and um, the temperature is just getting, coming right to... Uh, microgreens don't want to be going any lower than 70 degrees. So um, now that the temperatures come back up, last couple of days we've brought them out here to uh, finish them off. So this is great for finishing. Um, the natural sunlight is a hundred times better than any artificial lighting. So um, these sunflowers, uh, they taste incredible because obviously the sun and we've got spicy salads here, wasabi and um, I think looks like kale so there's kale broccoli um, and some mild broccoli I think these two are one is hot and one is mild so um, the good thing about microgreens they don't need any water circulation so we just um, put the water in the tray here put about a cup of water in there um, in the morning and in the evening and in the next day, 12 hours later, it's, um, it's all evaporated or all used up by the plant. So the plant just uses the water. We use a, a special brew for that, which will remain part of our intellectual property. And what we want to demonstrate here is we're really still in winter. We just had a freeze below 32 degrees, um, quite a bit below, and it was really cold. Outside there was a wind chill factor of probably 20 um, and it was a good northerly blasting down so it was a, a real cold and of course with all the greenhouse and the shielding um, it was a toasty 50, 60 degrees here and at night it got as low as 40 degrees. You notice here we've got strawberries and this one here is just about ready. Um, the thing with growing strawberries and, and organic food is we only use our fish waste that comes out of here. Oh, by the way, there's our tilapia. You can see uh, that big fella in there is a, um, a costumus. He's decided he's going to start eating um, lettuce today. So that's basically what we're feeding our fish, organic lettuce and um, any of these, these plants up here. Like there's a beautiful, there's a beautiful kale. Um, they love the kale. And so, um, and of course, this lettuce here. particularly love the lettuce. So if you're watching, I'll just snap that up. A little bit shy with the camera and with another person in here, but they'll literally. <laughs> Yeah, but
Jarvis through. Um, that is really, really special. Down here is another one here. Look at that. That goes really good on um, on a salad. Um, so that it's incredible. Really strong. strawberries and um, what happened with those we had them growing outside and we decided to uh, bring them in because we thought they would die in the um, in the cold and we transplanted a whole heap here and they've just taken off since then so you notice that yeah that one's just about ready yeah this this is how they, they grow outside and they had this leafy and then a starter root which I grabbed the main, the main plant in the starter, and I uh, just brought the two in and, and poked them in in these uh, net pots, and they've just come away. So some the good part, and that's harvesting. So this fella here has been looking at me all this time, so I'm gonna nip them off and try it. Perfect. Well, actually, up there, the big ones is the um, Swiss chard. So that's a, that's been our staple winter meal, winter food. So we've been um, uh, chewing on that all winter. Um, that's really good with a stew and that type of thing. Fish feed, these guys we feed them letters and um, kale over the winter because it's easy to grow. 
and in the summertime, um, this is comfrey. And as you can see, it's only just coming back again. This was a big plant in the summer, and as it cooled off um, outside, it uh, died away, and uh, now the leaves are just coming back through again. So this will be a big billowing plant with 12, 15 inch leaves on it. And um, we have a, a hundred of these outside to uh, keep our fish going. Comfy is very nutritious. It's a very powerful antibiotic. So um, when you've got fish crowding, it's really good for them. okra leaves which is something we discovered here in Alabama that uh, we've never seen okra grow so um, huge before the trees here and yet in California um, they get about two or two and a half feet tall and that was it so um, that became one of their staple diets along with the comfrey um, over the summertime and they, um, they really enjoyed that the fish love the comfrey um, and okra. The, the other one is um, we also found out this place is overrun by kutsu so um, we see that as a very good um, organic feed for fish uh, over the summertime and in their growth spurt so um, we had to uh, try that out and see how that uh, works on. So, grabbing these ones here, and of course this is this is where your where our 100 square foot garden comes in. Time outside, we have a 1500 square foot garden that's effectively abandoned now because it's just way too cold. So, but here we got all this flourishing food. And so we can just go right through winter without even. These these kale they probably took about um, three months, two to three months to get to this stage, and we've been trimming them back ever since. Uh, these things here, um, yeah, once that once we got. We got going with one. We just started cutting these nodules off, and you see those roots, root hairs there. So we could just cut that from there, that there, and we'll have a watercress plant come out of that. And we just put that. These here are arugula. Um, here's your tomatoes. They're all starting to get some height on them. Um, yeah, these ones here, are bok choy. Here's some more bok choy. Here's some bigger ones. Cabbage these ones and uh, these are small kale and they'll be going up top to these are lettuce so um, we're growing them wherever wherever we can get space we kind of run out of space because we've even taken up the back pipe here uh, but today these letters here are going to be for us so um, and of course, there's no spray or anything on them, so we just eat them just like this. Put them straight on the plate and down the hatch. So this is really, really clean. Um, we actually take about um, half a gallon of fish poop and just yucky stuff. And right outside there is our bonanza. And uh, we'll go out and, and uh, show you. Here we are. This is the ozone line. Okay. So, um, so it's coming through, and effectively that's what it is. Quarter inch hose with ozone running through it into our bonanza, and that's all that's running. So. Um, now this is going to be redesigned. Our pattern is totally different. But uh, this is the working prototype that's been going for five years. So all the, yeah. all the worms are oh, wow. going down, but they're, they're, they're down there. And they're, they're thick. Wow. 
red wigglers. A lot of worms. Mm -hmm. And so that's like um that's <laughs> the stumps that are left over from the uh, what yeah. we've been feeding the fish. Uh -huh. And so we just throw that in yeah, there. Yeah, no, there's there's just crazy worms in there. And so so what we um, found the worms seem to like is they love this stuff. And so this is a whole day because um, I got this first lot this morning. Mm -hmm. I'd already um, cleaned up the, the tank there and then just this last bit just to show you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, you wouldn't really be doing this unless you were gonna, it was down the toilet or in the <laughs> dump. That's what we're saying, that takes 12 hours so we can turn a gallon of poop, okay? That's half a gallon, but um, I've actually taken some of it. I usually do this in the morning and in the evening, um, half a gallon at a time. Well, what we put in, we take out. So, so um, <laughs> that's, that's what the machine lies. inside does. It's cleaning it. And that's fertilizer. <laughs> Now what we the next uh, uh, the next system we build that'll be automated so, and it'll go from there mm. directly piped directly into the oh, system. Oh yeah, no, we're depending on power supply because this is going to be run off solar. For 125, 35 watts, that's a that's a very small panel, okay. And then a battery to run it over night time, that's no problem. So we need to probably three, four times that amount so we can get through the night. But anyway, the, the, the whole thing is the water supply, 1%. Um, we're actually using about, out of the 300 gallons in here, we take one gallon out a day, okay? So that's all we need to top up the plants. And, um, and so around the back here, the fish tank is topped up. Now I've pulled the roof down and you can see photos but um, and I've taken that all away. Here, so down there. So um, oh, I'm down in the no. bottom here. So that's rainwater collected. Is yeah. independent of any water source. Mm -hmm.